This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Go to Assist Express. We got an email from Andrew who wrote, I know I'm a bit late, but I was just wondering if you could give me your advice on upgrading to Lion if you're on a Mac desktop. A lot of the features of Lion are obviously aimed at notebook users. So, as a desktop user without a magic trackpad, is it really worth my while upgrading from Snow Leopard, which pretty much does what I need? Andrew in London. You're not late, Andrew. Uh, waiting for other folks to find the giant gaping flaws in a new OS is always a prudent idea. But we figured we'd get someone who spent some quality time with Apple's latest OS X. Will Smith from Tested.com. Hi. Surprise, we yeah, have Will Smith wow. here. It's a big reveal. Um, so I know he was asking mostly about desktop features, but what are some of the things yeah. that you do like right off the bat with OS X Live? So the first thing that I really love is the integration of mission control. Uh, it's it's expo expose plus spaces. Right. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is it gives you an opportunity to see all of the virtual desktops that are running on your machine and all of the apps that are open at the same time. So you can have virtual desktops that are dedicated to things like, you know, uh, well, web browsing and communication and, you know, applications that are not open yet. <laughs> um, so I see here you've named them like desktop one, desktop two. You know, not exactly the most original in terms of theming your desktop. It's nice to think that I have an opportunity to name those, but unfortunately you don't. You can only use the names that, uh, space, that spaces or mission control applies. Yeah. So you can't rename, you can't reorganize, you can't move them around, and they don't really save state if you close them. So say I have my communication desktop all lined up with mail and, and uh, tweet deck and iChat. I close that all that stuff goes back over to the first desktop, which is a little bit of a drag. I had kind of just assumed that it was doing them thematically like it does in, in iOS. It's a fair assumption, Yeah. but it doesn't do that at all. Guess not. Uh, one of the other things that's great is the addition of full screen mode. So Ooh, yes. uh, if you're on a laptop, this doesn't really apply to your user who's a, who's a desktop user, but if you're on a laptop, you can bust open apps that you use frequently like iTunes or Mail. Uh, this requires API support, so not everything supports it yet, but it's coming for, for most apps, it seems, especially popular stuff. And uh, it shows up in Mission Control like a dedicated space. So you can use the, the quick touchpad shortcuts back and forth to navigate from spaces directly into full screen apps and then back to spaces again, which is surprisingly handy, on, a, especially on a laptop. Yeah, I like that feature a lot too. Um, what don't you like so much? So the thing I really don't like is Launchpad. I'm gonna go ahead and open it because I just can't, I can't do the pinch gesture to do this. You are physically incapable of doing I, the, the I, my, pinch. They don't work that way. I, I've got <laughs> goofy claws. Um, Launchpad is basically the iOS home screen that you know from iPhone and iPad writ large across the Mac and it is broken in a lot of ways. Mainly is that it doesn't actually make it easier for you to organize your apps. So uh, if the, there, I could explain how this works. Basically it's just really confusing. You end up with a giant mishmash of apps spread across like five or six pages and, and you can't ever find what you're looking for. And the organization is not the best. It, it doesn't make sense. It's not alphabetical. Apple stuff is on the first page. Stuff that you installed before Lion is on the next few pages, and then stuff that you installed after line fills in the gaps on those pages or just gets tacked on at the end, which, I mean, it doesn't make sense at all to me. So as a desktop user, is yes. this something that he really needs to upgrade to, or is this really mostly for the people who are on the notebooks? I really think right now for everyone, given the window management problems that, that I've had, I know you've had some problems with files Copying, not being able pasting, to copy and paste. Right. Yeah. Uh, basically, I think everybody should wait until they fix the window manager problems and the other small bugs that have popped up, whether you're a desktop user or a laptop user, unless, of course, you got a MacBook Air and you know you can only get that with Lion right I kind of wish I had waited a little bit. I'm finding a lot of compatibility issues with applications that I used to have. It's like, no, well, now they just don't work. Well, and even stuff like, uh, like Chrome. Chrome is a really incredibly popular app. It, you know, they're not supporting the APIs properly. Is what Apple would say, I kind of don't care because I'm the end user and Chrome goes into the background and foreground randomly when I'm trying to type in there. It makes it not usable for me. It so. seems like everyone kind of has had a different experience. It, it's not the OS 10 releases that we've come to expect from Apple in the past. So. Well, good to know. Um, what else is new on Tested.com recently? We just finished up CNC week last week where Norm and I actually went and built a Thingamatic, which is the second generation MakerBot. I brought our old cupcake by here a few months ago. Uh, and then Norm built a robot that can print on eggs. On eggs. It's very cute. It's a little tiny, and it will print words and globes and all sorts of crazy stuff over eggs. A unique gift for the loved one in your life. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming well, by. Thanks, Veronica. <laughs> We've got more of your emails still to come, but first, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. There are two things IT professionals and their clients have in common. They want the job done right, and they want it done fast, like yesterday. That's what we recommend. Go to Assist Express by Citrix to anybody in IT. Puts clients at ease with its simple and secure remote support and puts you in a position to do what you do best. Access, diagnose, and resolve instead of sitting in the airport suffering. 
Do yourself a favor, try Go to Assist Express. It's free for 30 days. Visit gotoassist.com slash techzilla to see how you can deliver live tech support to anybody, anywhere with Go to Assist Express. That's gotoassist.com slash techzilla for a free trial, and you'll be helping keep Techzilla coming every week.